Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, summer's officially here, and you can smell the mats at Fargo. Before we go there, let's talk about the cadet and junior national duels. Illinois continued their dominance in freestyle with a dual team title over Minnesota. The score, 46-29. Illinois opened with a win when Luke Luffman scored a 10-0 tech fall at 285 pounds. Minnesota rebounded with a come-from-behind win by Blake West at 88. Trailing 12-6 in the second period, West chipped away at the lead, scoring seven straight points, including the winning takedown, which is 15 seconds left on the clock to take the bout. 13-12. Illinois responded with yet another bonus point victory as Sawyer Nash scored multiple times on top for a 12-2 tech fall over Kane and Habel. Minnesota returned to favor with a technical fall of its own as Paxton Crease Watch this name and remember it. He dominated from his feet, picking up an 11-0 tech. Illinois kept up the pressure with another tech fall by Matt Ramos at 106. No relation to Tony Ramos, by the way. The next tech for Illinois came at 113. Noah Certain broke open the match with three straight gut wrenches to close out the victory there, 12-2. Illinois now led 17-10 at that point in the duel. Minnesota looked to be in trouble again at 120, trailing 10-2 early, but Ryan Sokol scored an amazing 18-12 comeback victory over Jacob Lindsay. The Storm added bonus point victories at 126, 132, and 138 to lead Illinois at this point, 24-19. Team Illinois did not give up, though. They came back with four straight bonus point victories, not only scoring big team points, but also not allowing a single technical point to a Minnesota wrestler in those bouts. Talk about a commanding performance. Fidel Mayora scored on both feet and on the mat, getting a spin behind takedown with one second left in the first period for a 10-0 tech fall of his own. Showing dominance on his feet, Donna Washington scored three two-point takedowns and a big four-point throw. Very exciting, I might add. 10-0 tech fall. That one over Dylan Fudge at 152. Can you smell the fudge? I can smell the fudge. Smells better than that. <laughs> the next victory was huge as David Ferrante of Illinois and Cade King of Minnesota went hard at 160. Leading 2-1, King threw Ferrante for four points, but Ferrante scored a quick reversal for two and then pinned King in a minute 36 for five big team points for Team Illinois. Abe Assad was in control the entire way, scoring four straight takedowns, then a quick turn for a 10-0 first period tech fall over Dalton Andrews at 170. At the end of four-match dominant run, Team Illinois moved to the lead, 36-24. Minnesota picked up a victory at 182, but Illinois closed out the victory with two straight pins, I said pins, to finish the duel with style. All right, Tony, your turn. Thoughts on Illinois, dominance in freestyle, and Greco? Well, yeah, Illinois, uh, you know, they, they came up short in Greco, but they just have a, a really good infrastructure. A lot of these state, you know, USA wrestling-led organizations have full of coaches. And what really, you know, Illinois, Oklahoma State, they've got business-minded people right. on those staff. So there's lots of infrastructure, I guess, at the lower level that's trying to get these guys in. Funding is a big thing and getting these guys the proper training. So there's a big difference. Every, people just have to look at what other places are doing and copy that. It's pretty easy. And I tell you what, if you can copy Illinois, you got yourself a game plan. The tournament was broadcast live by our friends at TrackCast and fans. You can see the archive bouts by visiting trackwrestling.com. All right, next up, Titan Mercury's Johnny Ruggiano joins us to talk about the Titan Mercury 10, the club members that will be competing at the World Championships. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Yellow Blue LED. Stay tuned. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting and you should too.
Welcome back to GWN. Tony Casper, what are we doing? We're going to talk to Johnny Ruggiano next from Titan Mercury. Johnny, welcome back. Let's talk about Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, the other balance of the 10. Now, we're going to talk about six guys in particular. One was just on the, sh- on the uh, radio show, Thomas Gilman. That young man can walk the walk, talk the talk, and back it all up with a whole lot of surprises. He's got a neat bag of tools, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. And um, he's the first wrestler to ever get out of the last chance qualifier and make the world team. I mean, we, we talk about how it's just a meat grinder, just getting out of, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the mini tournament and how that, you know, sometimes kind of puts in a really tough uh, advantage for the guy who's sitting in the finals most of the time. But I mean, imagine last chance qualifier, then you got to get through 57 kilos. It's just nails weight class where everybody, I mean, there's so many guys in there that could, can make that spot. And now you're, you're going against kind of that solidified world team member in Tony Ramos. I, I definitely became a real big fan of Thomas Gilman uh, at the world team trials. We go to 65 kilos, uh, Jordan Oliver, Frank Molinero, Zane Rutherford, nice uh, matchup there, but I got a guy who's hanging out at 70. He's on the show this Saturday. Who is the real James Green? You know, I think I think we're about to find out in Paris this year. Uh, James is just getting better and better and better every single time he steps out on the mat. Is I know I sound like a broken record, but I mean he controlled the match. He just he controlled everything from every single position at World Team Trials against a, a very tough, uh, athletic Jimmy Kennedy, a very strong Jimmy Kennedy. I don't think I've ever seen Jimmy Kennedy. Uh, you know. Uh, be dominated so much by a, a single wrestler in the fashion that James did. And, uh, you know, I, I personally think that James's leg lace is the best in the business. And some people might disagree with me on that, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going for James on that. He's, he's really coming into his own and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see, uh, you know, fully committed and confident James Green in Paris. I'm excited to see Jaden Cox uh, in Paris as well. I'm excited to see him at 86 kilos. Uh, he looks good. He's he's recommitted, got football out of the brain, and uh, he's also another tight Mercury Wrestling Club guy. Um, I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. No, I don't think so. Um, and I think I think we're going to get there. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, before we kind of jump into Jaden, you know, there's, there's two other Titan Mercury guys in the fold there that, you know, um, you know, can't, can't go without discussing about, you know, just their ability and their character and, and, uh, you know, their, their tenacity and, and also their just fighting spirit. And that's, you know, Kyle Dake did something no one's ever uh, seen happen where he, uh, you know, he, he took out Jordan in Lincoln for the first match. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, it was definitely kind of a, you know, uh, a good guy, bad guy uh, feel when you're in the room, you know, the fans were all behind Jordan, which is completely understandable. You've got one of the greatest wrestlers of all time in American history. Uh, but, you know, when we look at 2018, I mean, this is how glorious it could be for the United States of America. There might be a spot uh, where we don't have to see the contention uh, where one guy's stuck at home or is a backup. Uh, we might be able to see both, you know, a Dake and a Taylor and a Cox and a JB all in the lineup and, and uh, you know, follow that up with Snyder and Gwiz. So, uh, you know, the, the competition that the guys brought out um, was just amazing. Um, some of the best matches we had. So um, regarding um, Jaden, you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is uh, Jaden and David both gave the wrestling fans just – uh, and a match, uh, two out of three matchup, you know, just like Tony and, and Thomas did, you know, and, and Jordan and, and Kyle, uh, you know, a match matchups for the ages. And those are matches that, you know, you're going to go back and watch over and over and over again. Um, you know, back to 96, there's matches there that I, I still go back and, you know, watch, you know, um, some of those matchups that, that were just iconic American legendary uh, matches. And we saw a lot of that in Lincoln. Johnny, thanks for the time today. It's a pleasure, Scott. Thanks for having me. And uh, anytime, always love talking wrestling with you. 
All right, stay tuned. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Pure and Clean Sports. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. The International Olympic Committee has announced the addition of climbing, skateboarding, karate, surfing, and baseball. No jumping yet. According to the IOC, the goal is to make the games more youthful, more urban, and more inclusive to females. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Good afternoon uh, to uh, all of you, and uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, interest in our executive board uh, meeting. It was uh, really a very busy meeting, uh, but I think uh, also a, a, a very exciting uh, meeting in uh, the way that uh, really one uh, major decision was uh, following uh, the other one. So it was a, a really intense and uh, good day uh, there for the uh, Olympic uh, Games and uh, for uh, the IOC. Uh, you have uh, already been informed about uh, the uh, event program for the Olympic Games uh, Tokyo uh, uh, 2020. Uh, and uh, this is uh, another implementation of uh, Olympic Agenda uh, 2020. And I'm uh, really delighted uh, that uh, with uh, these uh, decisions, uh, the Olympic Games in uh, Tokyo uh, will be uh, more uh, useful, uh, they will be more urban, and uh, we will have uh, more women in uh, the Olympic Games uh, than uh, ever uh, before. These uh, fascinating uh, new events, which we have approved uh, uh, today, uh, have uh, to be seen together with uh, the five additional uh, sports uh, that uh, were already uh, added to uh, the Tokyo 2020 uh, program. Uh, last uh, year, sport climbing, karate, baseball, softball, surfing, uh, and uh, skateboarding. And all this uh, together uh, represents uh, a real step change in uh, the uh, Olympic uh, program, about uh, which uh, I'm uh, really absolutely delighted and uh, excited. And I think uh, we can look forward uh, to great days 
of uh, sport uh, in uh, Tokyo uh, uh, 2020. Unfortunately, the additions will come at the expense of other sports, including wrestling. Wrestling will have 56 fewer slots than Rio, bringing the total number to just 16 athletes per weight. You know, with President Lalovic on IOC, you know, you thought that we'd have some change or we'd have a voice there for wrestling. We could right. leverage that a little bit um, with him being United, United World Wrestling. He's done so much for them already, already, you know, really kind of rebranding, you know, how wrestling looks. And I think it's a lot better place you know, now than it was before him. So what, what he has to do, this is really important for wrestling. I mean, we can see, I think wrestling is going to be out of the Olympics by 2024. I think at that point that they're going to relook at this again and try to push us out. Well, let me give you my opinion on the IOC. Don't trust them. At the end of the day, if we do choose to exit on our own or they choose to push us out, we put all of our efforts toward the world championship. That is a growing effort, and we're seeing it around the world. It's just getting ridiculous. Race walking, a sport? Rhythmic gymnastics, equestrian riding. You want to talk about pompous and non-inclusive. How many people can afford a horse, let alone take care of a horse? Well, I mean, just think about all the travel. Some of these, you probably have to fly some of these horses. I don't, even, I don't know if you can even fly them. But you know, there's just so many ridiculous sports out there. I saw hobby horsing online the other day. I don't think it's a sport yet, but it's a competitive event. Literally, on a horse, well, you know, going around. I mean, are you kidding me? Um, but when he gets to the, you're talking about... Inclusive, exclusive. I mean, you're talking about the, this horsing thing is the biggest deal, and I that is definitely not allowing a broad range of females, males to get into that type of sport. So that that statement is just bogus. All right. So this is news that seems to be coming out of left field. What's being done? Well, I, I don't. I don't know. That's the problem. I mean, there hasn't really been a statement yet from United World Wrestling on this. There's just been a couple of media outlets that have have talked about it. You know, I'm just. I'm really starting to wonder if. You know, if the Olympics is really what we need to, you know, what our focus needs to be going forward. Certainly putting a lot of effort to trying to pacify these pacifiers. Yeah, I, well, the, you know, believe it or not, you know, there's a lot of coaches right now that I've, I've talked to that just want to get out of the Olympics. I mean, there's with RTC battles now, we can have full on duels. There's mo a lot more money in wrestling, I think, feel like right now. So, you know, why are we. I guess catering to the Olympics. I mean, I get like that has like been the pinnacle of our sport forever, right? But at the end of the day, like we have to fight for it all the time. We could spend more efforts towards, you know, maybe creating a league, creating some type of UFC type one off uh, where it is Prowl. wrestling. Yeah, Prowl. I mean, if that can take off, we can put our focus in that and put more money in our wrestlers. Pockets. I mean, you could tell that they don't appreciate and respect what we do. It doesn't get any airtime in the Olympics. All the points that you're making, I think, are valid. Uh, we need to take a good, solid look. It's just uh, you know what we've been we've been training for. But you think about it though, like we all train we train folk style. That's like our main thing in well stateside in stateside. And uh, what I like about folk style is you know what I like about it is just because there's more fans there. When we get to freestyle, you now the World Cup, our fans struggle to connect with those big type type of events because they don't know the wrestlers that we're competing against. We know the guys in the United States, but you know, when you're going up against Sajalayev, you don't really people don't really know who that is. So they don't, you know, gain interest in that and they don't grab a hold of it. The dual teams at the World Cup I think is one of the best events that we have other than the World Championships. But the World Cup, you really get that dual feel and you feel like everyone's cheering for America. All right. Let me point this out too. People complain about two different styles of wrestling, but look at swimming. There's twenty different ways to move through the water. Well, swimming is what, like what ninety eight percent of Americans probably have swam at one point in their time. They've been thrown in a pool. Wrestling is probably ten percent. Maybe a few people have you know grappled in the living room a little bit, but it's just a smaller niche sport. And when people watch it on TV, they can relate to oh, I can maybe do that. I can maybe do the backstroke and wrestling, Greco and freestyle. It's so confusing because they've been introduced to folk style more than likely at a high school or grade school level so when they get to folk style and greco and seeing it it's just so confusing so how are they going to relate to that all right we'll take a quick time out you're watching global wrestling news we'll continue to beat the drum on your behalf
waged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back. Coach Lou Roselli has landed a big one. Two-time state runner-up Anthony Madrigal has verbally committed to the University of Oklahoma. The Illinois native is a two-time Cadet National Freestyle All-American and was a Fargo runner-up in 2015. Madrigal is ranked 24th in the class of 2018 and projects out strong at 33 or 41. I thought Madrigal was a lock for Nebraska. You know, my reports of people that I was talking to, had him going in Nebraska. You know, this is a guy that we've had in some of our events over I E Russell. You know, he's so lanky uh, when he wrestles, and he just needs to get a little bit more muscle on there. Yeah. I'm sure they, they will at the college level. He gets that done. He's going to be a good 33, 41-pounder for Lou Roselli. Is this Roselli's top hire so far, top recruit? Yeah, they've had some good transfers that have come in. I believe the only other one would be a Tommy Hoskins. He's at, projected at 25, 33, so he's, he's kind of – Looking to, to build that lower weight staple. Uh, so, you know, Oklahoma's, you know, Lou Roselli is going to keep building on this. Oh, office. keep building. Well, how about this? Speaking of Lou, the Sooners head man has been named the 2016 Terry McCann Freestyle Coach of the Year. Roselli has served as personal coach to Kyle Snyder, Tavel Delagna, Reese Humphrey, and many others. You can't say enough about his freestyle success. And this is why he's so widely respected when there was coaching departures. Lou Roselli's name always got up. Think in about the top five. Yeah, I mean, think about how many assistant coaches out there really had their name at the top. There was maybe one, two, or three, and the rest of them were head coaches from other programs to come in. So very well respected. He's had our attention, and for a long time he's had our respect. Intermats Mark Palmer has released a report on the state of college wrestling. As of 2016, there are a total of 7,075 wrestlers in all three divisions. That's 835 more over the past 15 years. However, that growth has been entirely in Divisions 2 II and 3. By contrast, Division 1 has seen a decline in the total number of participants from 2,754 to 2,501, or about a 9% decrease. I think that the NWCA's clear focus really has been those lower levels. I just feel like it's... Well, they're listening. Yeah, they're listening and it, I feel like it's financially more viable for those schools to put a, you know, a wrestling room together. The D1 schools, they don't have a whole lot of room on those campuses, it seems like. And then when they do build one, it's like a multi-billion dollar facility and they got to put in volleyball or another sport in there. But these other schools, these small schools can put wrestling in, in older, you know, older rooms, and they make it happen. You're making it happen, indeed. In 2000, there were 90 D1 programs. That number is now 76. That's just 22% of Division One schools offering wrestling as a varsity sport. Yeah, 100%, I think this uh, comes down to revenue for a lot of these schools. Wrestling loses money. There's very few programs, I think, that, you know, make money. Iowa, Penn State, Oklahoma State probably does, too. I mean, not a ton of people have a lot of fans coming in, so it's a, it's a lose-lose situation, but... You know, it's uh, getting those people on campus that's really important for a lot of these schools. So there's a reason why they're keeping it, obviously, but it's it's to add it, it doesn't it's not very attractive. Well, remember, uh, athletic offerings at any institution were never designed to make money, but they surely weren't designed to lose as much. Yeah. You know, financial part of wrestling is so important. There's right. programs out there that have assistant coaches out there fundraising for their own salary at a Division One program, a state college. Is that, that's just that's just not right for me. Our sport has to get out of that mindset the coach has their hands on everything let people help you all right breaking news tony i was just handed this uh, release 
Uh, Arizona State has announced the signing of Cade Belshay. This comes to us as we are on the air. Belshay won the 2017 USA Wrestling Folk Style Nationals. He was a state champ in California for Buchanan High School, and he's projected out at 184 or 97, a strong candidate for Barrett, the Honors College at ASU as well. So congratulations to Coach Zeke Jones, his staff, and, of course, Cade Belshay. Tony, we're out of time. You've been watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to each and every one of you for watching. We'll talk to you next week.